uh, we come to the next round, and this, uh, there will uh, the speakers will be uh, Ms. Svetlana Olova from the Russian Federation, Piero Fasino from Italy, and um, I'm sorry, and uh, um, here I have, and uh, Nevzat Dogan from Turkey. Please, uh, Svetlana. Thank you. Mr. Yagland, it's always a pleasure to listen to you. And you always answer our questions in a very professional manner. I do have questions on this. Over the last 12 months, against a backdrop of socioeconomic crisis, we've seen a rise in, uh, in extremism and extreme right-wing movements. In a series of countries, including the Baltic countries, we've seen demonstrations with veterans and representatives of a whole series of right-wing extremist organizations. These such movements were condemned in the Nuremberg trials. Unfortunately, we've all seen similar phenomena in Ukraine. The Council of Europe and all of us should give very careful thought how we should respond to these events in which there is enormous danger. You talked about fake news. And I agree, if our budgets were larger, we would be better off and we could launch campaigns. However, we've seen a problem when it comes to the role of different institutions in terms of responsibility. What's your position on this? Although clearly we understand you. We come now to the next item in the debate. It's the budget and resources of the Congress for the next biennium. I give the floor to the co-rapporteurs, Mr. Xavier Gadori from France and Mrs. Svetlana Orlova from Russia. You have six minutes each. Uh, please, Mr. Gadori, you have the floor. You, uh, Mrs. Orlova, you start. Six minutes. Thank you. Madam President, distinguished colleagues, one of the most important issues for the Congress we're considering today is the budget. The Congress is um, submitting to the Committee of Ministers uh, in due form information on uh, the situation together with the exchange of information with the Secretary General and other committees. And this uh, problem is one which has to be resolved. On the one hand, as the President herself said, the Congress has spent nearly all the financial resources earmarked for 2016 for carrying out 11 monitoring missions. This is one of the most important functions of Congress. So it is continuing its efforts under its long-standing role of monitoring, particularly with respect to the European Charter of Local Self-Government. This is one of the main priorities of the Congress. On the other hand, we should not forget that uh, the, the volume of tasks placed upon us is continually growing, while the resources assigned are more and more scant. And unfortunately, colleagues, we are seeing that uh, the budget percentage of the Congress vis-à-vis -vis the whole of the Council of Europe drops each year. And there has been cuts in staff. Work is continuing on examining the methods of work. Yesterday, uh, the Secretary told us how the uh, Secretary is working, how they're trying to uh, improve their methods, upgrade 
way their methods, how they're trying to save money through uh, various uh, means so that we can focus on the main functions of the Congress. And the key here is to draw the attention of the Committee of the Ministers on what we view to be as an unacceptable future cut in the budget of uh, the Congress for the coming years. Uh, you refer to the huge numbers of communal authorities, there's the problem of migration, the problems of monitoring. These are crucial uh, issues and many of the issues which countries face are being transferred to local and regional authorities in order to resolve citizens' problems. The Congress is a unique European body. I'd like to reaffirm that. I'd like to stress that the Congress needs clearly to demonstrate its efficiency to avoid such cuts, as well as its significance to the Council of Europe. And we've uh, taken the decision that all heads of delegations of all 47 countries will do more to spread the word about the Congress in our countries. And a lot of the actions which are being supported by many countries are important in this regard. And of course, we need need to work with uh, the heads of our national delegations so that uh, uh, people take on board the fact that these, uh, uh, the Congress and the Chambers are very important bodies. We also need to uh, look at uh, the election issue, the regional elections, local government elections, where our Congress has a key role to play. There are also very topical programs of the Council of Europe which are in line with our priorities. And this means uh, making the most of the expert potential of uh, the Congress when it comes to decentralization in Ukraine, for example. And uh, this is one of the key priorities of the Council of Europe today. You'll remember the uh, creative discussions that took place regarding uh, uh, local authorities and regional authorities vis-a-vis -vis the economic crisis. You remember the, ch the challenges there the discussions then, and uh, many people have uh, uh, pinned their hopes on the work done in this uh, chamber, especially the uh, rapporteurs and the various other people when it comes to methods of work. Of course, there needs to be cooperation with the national governments. We need to ensure there are uh, consultations on financial and economic policy and the regional authorities can better adapt anti-crisis measures and use available resources better to meet the needs of their societies. We see that many uh, decentralized economies recover more quickly from the economic crisis. They're more flexible in adapting to changing uh, situations and challenges. Uh, as you can see, the Congress is also funded from voluntary contributions, and I think uh, the Congress is in a position to put forward topical, interesting projects and programs, and we can get that message through to our governments in order to ensure the resources are forthcoming for these projects. I'm deeply convinced that today's discussions will allow us to find new ways and means of enhancing the role of the Congress on the issues with which we deal. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Orlova.